Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday over here in the Atlantic. Again, we have two systems, one being Tropical Depression 10 in the Eastern Atlantic that nobody cares about right now. We're focusing on Hurricane Irene over here north of the Bahamas, moving northward towards the North Carolina coast and the Outer Banks. We're going to be watching this very closely, obviously, as people are evacuating this area, and we are now moving in, getting close to landfall. This is the infrared imagery. I'm up so early this morning that there is not very much visible to show you, but here we're seeing these reds here. We've got reds in the eye wall and some reds in the band to the north here. We're starting to try to expand the convective area near the center, but in general, this is rather lackluster looking. And this red here is not as deep as it could be, and the eye has disappeared, certainly on infrared imagery. And this looks rather ragged in here. Definitely looks like a storm that is struggling with its core. And we do have a few visible imageries after the sun has come up here. And we can see, let me slow this down just a tad, but you can see the eye wall in here showing up, but then there's this gap. You can see a gap of dry air getting entrained right in here, right into the core, and this is causing issues, and this storm has been rather strange. It has undergone an eye wall replacement cycle, but it never got to finish because the eye remained open afterwards, the eye wall. So it has not fully reformed, although it formed a new eye, which has still been contracting here, and it may try to go through yet another replacement cycle later today if this eye continues to wrap up too tight we may get this band to try to come in here and form off a new large eye wall, but we'll see how that goes. Right now, the southwest quad is completely gone. There's no convective tops down here, just cirrus, and right up into the eye wall in here, it's fairly dry, and we can see that fairly easily on the microwave pass, showing an eye wall that is open to the southwest here. Not a lot going on in the southwest quad, a lot of dry air in this area entrained into the storm. And from the visible imagery, you can see, notice all this inflow coming out of the west-northwest right off of Florida. So there's a lot of dry air coming off of the continent and getting entrained into the storm's core. We talked about how this could try to weaken the storm a little bit as it moves up towards North Carolina, and we can see that it's having an effect. The storm, though, has been was gradually deep, deepening yesterday, and the pressure kept falling millibar by millibar, and then it steadied off at 942, 943 millibars last night, rock solid until just this past hour, where the pressure has risen four millibars in just one hour, so it is now starting to fill, and perhaps for the short term, rather rapidly, if it just rose four millibars in one hour here, but it is likely that this will remain a powerful hurricane as it moves up towards North Carolina. The wind field right now is so large that the winds found by recon don't even support more than a category 2 hurricane right now. This could change with time and this is not necessarily good news for North Carolina, but we can see what's going on right now. We've got a lot of beautiful outflow from the northwest all the way through the southeast, and then it gets choked off in the southwest quadrant with Irene, and we can see why there's an upper level low southwest of Florida, which is no longer moving away from the system and is trying to swing around here and is blocking off the outflow in the southwest quad, also allowing dry air to, be, to come into this more vulnerable part of the storm. And then, of course, we have a lot of dry air over the continent, waiting to get entrained into Irene's circulation as she moves up near the Carolina coast here. We have shortwave trough number one is leaving the scene, and we have strong ridging developing here, so this Irene's going to continue north-northeast towards the Outer Banks, and then we have trough number two over Canada, which is going to be swinging by and performing the final step in bringing Irene northward along the coast and phasing with this trough over southeast Canada and New England and the uh, Canadian Maritimes over the next few days. This is the NHC forecast track, which in general I agree with here, a track that I've had for the last couple of days over the Outer Banks, just east of Jersey, I think, and then into western Long Island here. We'll see the fine details of whether this comes up west of New York City here. I don't know the name of this bay. I knew it yesterday and forgot it already. Um, or just east of New York City, which would bring it right into Long Island. Either way, a bad surge for the folks in here. The storm surge is a big deal with this, folks. The seawall, I heard, is only five feet high. A storm like this of this size and coming at a very high tide this month 
could bring a 10 to 15 foot surge into Long Island. So we are concerned about flooding subway systems and things like that. Folks just need to be prepared for this kind of an event that doesn't happen too often for these folks in here. So hopefully folks are getting safe and having plans to deal with the storm. You can see the Hurricane Center forecast this to re-strengthen to a category three. I actually agree here. Yesterday I was talking about this getting to a four in this area and then weakening off to a low three and it's not giving me the category four right now which means that it doesn't you can't look much worse than this the eye wall can't really get more ragged the southwest quad can't get any more empty and open so my thinking now is that with all this dry over the continent already coming in there's really not much room for this to look any worse and given that the global models still show explosive deepening of the system overall as it moves up the eastern seaboard, I'm convinced that this isn't going to weaken too much and will maintain intensity or even strengthen back to that category three before moving into North Carolina. And we're going to talk about this. This is the European, one of the global models, the highest resolution one, showing 918 millibars by 0z tonight, which is 8 p.m. Eastern time. This is overdone. However, it continuously and very consistently has showed strengthening with the storm as it nears the outer banks here before finally starting to weaken. This is something of concern because it illustrates that the model is at least seeing something in the environment which does not argue for at least significant weakening, could even argue for some deepening before landfall. And I also noticed this this morning looking at the GFDL and the HWRF. If you look at the initialization here, this is the GFDL for illustrative purposes. Notice this number down here is showing the central pressure by the model. Initialized at 933.5, that is too low here. However, if we start going out just six hours later, it jumps out to 947 millibars and the wind field weakens a little bit up here. And if we go out another step, six hours, notice that it's weakening on the model showing up to 952. And notice that the wind field actually weakens to a category one wind field with these greens representing category one winds. And then we start stepping it out one more time and it starts to strengthen again, back down to 946 and then down to 940. 938 and you can see that we're now strengthening the wind field up to a cat 3. So basically the GFDL is seeing the weakening that we are seeing right now at this moment with the storm and then it shows re-strengthening as it nears the coast and the wind field tightens up. This is a very real possibility given that the storm is going through a major reorganization phase. If it can mix out any of that dry air and close off an eye wall, we could see this system ramp up a bit before landfall back into the cat 3, the low end cat 3 that I think it could and should be at landfall, but regardless, the effects are going to be pretty bad in North Carolina. Either way, we're going to have a big surge there. We're going to have a lot of wind for a long time, given the size of this storm as it moves up the coast, and so we're going to have a lot to deal with up here. In the Outer Banks, folks are evacuated, and hopefully things uh, get through safely over there. This is the HPC rainfall outlook, even without the winds being an issue for the Northeast. Just look at all this rainfall. Yellows are seven inches or more. Greens are 10 inches or more. We can see over eight inches extending well into New England here, right up the mid-Atlantic states, 10 inches right into Jersey for the next couple of days. And this is just a lot of rain on top of a lot of rain that they've already had this month. So there's going to be a lot of inland flooding issues in here on top of everything else that's going to be happening with Irene. So there's a lot going on with this storm, a lot of impacts possible. This is a big event and folks on the TV are not lying when they're telling you that this is an event that we don't see very often, something we may not have seen for a couple of decades and that is very true. The last storm to really be like this was Bob of 1991. That was 20 years ago, two decades. It's been a while. So folks in here need to realize what's coming at them could be a very serious situation. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.